The USA is planning to take the evolution of the helicopter to the next step with the future long-range assault aircraft program. Why was this program, which intends to change the whole perspective in this field in the next 50 years, needed? What are the important developments in the FLRAA? And could the program really do what they promised? As the weapon detective, we're examining this important program and its two competitors, the V2A Devaler and the SP-1 Defiant. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. Competing for the FLRAA program, the V-2A Valor and SP Defiant are not just helicopters superior to their predecessors. They are the game changers which may radically change helicopter design and military use. That's why FLRAA is a truly special program. However, in the 30 years since the end of the first Cold War, we have also witnessed a large number of such special programs being still born. There have been some other projects that managed to come to life. Yet, many of them, such as the JSF, still struggle with childhood illnesses that could be fatal. So, although the FLRAA is in theory the next step in helicopter evolution, its survival depends on its performance in overcoming many important problems in practice. Before analyzing the Valor and Defiant, let's take a look at why the FLRAA program started and what stages it has gone through. The US Army had to use its helicopters five times more than in peacetime, especially during Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operations Enduring Freedom. Therefore, the need to replace these rapidly worn out helicopters arose. At first glance, it seemed a logical step to replace the existing inventory with the same models. After all, the production lines of the UH-60, AH-64, and CH-47 were still open. These combat-proven helicopters were still winning major tenders in the international market. However, in the last two decades, significant innovations have been made in rotorcraft technologies. It was feasible, in terms of costs, to put these new technological leaps into practice to meet the needs of the US Army, which plans to acquire 4,000 new helicopters. Of course, to develop a new generation helicopter, a more practical reason was needed besides the excitement of new technologies. China has become a great military power. So the US interest has shifted to the Pacific region, where many islands spread over a vast area after Afghanistan and Iraq. But the current helicopters in use have a combat radius of approximately 300 to 350 kilometers. Therefore, the US Army and the US Special Operations Command need many helicopter groups and lots of bases to control the Pacific. Furthermore, the US Marine Corps also has to regularly deploy a great number of amphibious assault ships in the region. The combat radius should increase to decrease in the number of bases, groups and ships. But this is not enough alone. If the range of a UH-60 with a cruising speed of 280 km per hour doubles, its flight time also doubles. This increases the reaction time of a quick response team. Besides, the fatigue level of the troops who travel for a long time would be high when they reach the mission area. Therefore, the new helicopters have to be almost twice as fast than their predecessors. Thus, the future vertical lift, shortly FBL program, started in 2009 to study on the US Armed Forces vertical lift capabilities, technology development, and retaining long-term engineering capabilities. The program goal was the development of a rotorcraft family to replace the OH-58 Kiowa Scout UH-60 Blackout Utility, AH-64 Apache Attack, and CH-47 Chinook Heavy Lift Helicopters. Members of this family would use the common subsystems as possible. However, 
taking into account the complexity and high cost disadvantages of the Joint Strike Fighter and future combat systems programs, the US Army decided on a simpler development model. Priority was given to utility and attack helicopters. Thus, while the program became easier to proceed, a more affordable project cost could be presented to the US Congress, which is complaining about the excessive financial burden of the F-35. In 2019, the FLRA development program was initiated as a part of FLV as a study program. In the new program, the decision was made to continue with the V-280 Valor developed by Bell and the SB-1 Defiant developed in partnership with Skorsky and Boeing. For the new helicopter to replace the UH-60, the US Army demands a continuous cruise speed of at least 460 km per hour. But the desired speed is 520 km per hour. The minimum requirement of the US Marine Corps is 510 to 565 km per hour. Its desired speed is 546 to 611 km per hour. Due to the difference in squad formations, the US Army demands the helicopter to carry 12 troops and the US Marine Corps 8 troops. The range requirement is between 3,195 to 4,520 km. The new helicopter must have low radar and acoustic signatures. After having a brief look at the FLRAA, let's review the helicopters competing in the program. Considering their first flight dates, we will give priority to the V-280. The V-280 made its first flight on December 18, 2017. The helicopter has a different tilt rotor design than the V-22. Valor's turboshaft engines are fixed, not rotating with its entire body like the Osprey's. Only the rotor assembly rotates for the takeoff, landing and cruise. So, the exhausts of the fixed engines do not rotate downwards during vertical takeoff and landing. Therefore, the risk of hot air from the exhaust damaging the ship deck or setting on fire dry grass on land are eliminated. The constant forward-facing air intakes provide more efficient airflow for engines. The fixed design makes maintenance and repairs easier than on V-22s. Also, using the experience gained from Osprey, the Bell engineers have managed to reduce the drag around the Valor's engine significantly. The new design also minimizes the weight turbulence behind the engine during the flight. Thus, vibration and fluttering at the wingtips are reduced. The tilt rotor design provides the V-280s with a more stable hovering capability. The rotor, which would lose its drive in case of engine loss, can be driven by the shaft extending through the wing. The fuselage of the V-280 is made generally of composite materials to reduce weight. Aluminum was preferred for the framework. The wings are made of a single piece of carbon fiber reinforced polymer. The larger wingspan of the V-280 compared to the V-22 increases aerodynamic efficiency. These wings are not angled forward like the Osprey wings. Thus, it is possible to use simpler mechanical components. The V-280's V-type tail helps reduce the helicopter's radar and thermal signatures. It also weighs less than its conventional design and increases maneuverability. Valor's elastomer rotor bearing is resistant to high loads and does not need lubrication. The V-280's all-carbon rotor blades increase reliability, reduce costs and offer higher aerodynamic performance. Capable of carrying 14 troops apart from the crew, the Valor is 15.4 meters long, 24.93 meters wide and 7 meters high. The empty weight is 15,000 kilograms while the maximum takeoff weight is 26,000 kilograms. Two General Electric T-64 turboshaft engines enable the helicopter to reach a cruising speed of 520 km per hour, with a combat radius of 930 to 1480 km, the maximum range of the V-280 is 
3,900 kilometers. The helicopter has a hover ceiling of 1,800 meters out of the ground effect. Of course, these data belong to the development model. If the Valor becomes the winner of the contract, its mass production model will have different general characteristics. The Skorsky Boeing partnership shared less information about the SB-1 Defiant than its competitor, the V-280. The SB-1 Defiant made its first flight on March 21, 2019. Most of the technical information about this helicopter is based on the information shared on X-2 and S-97 Raider. It is a compound helicopter with a rigid coaxial rotors. It means the SP-1 has an additional system for thrust. The rotor designs used have prevented helicopters from exceeding a certain speed. On the SP-1, solid rigid composite rotor blades were preferred to overcome the speed limitation of helicopter aerodynamics. The propellers in the tail are driven by turboshaft engines that also power the main coaxial rotor. For this reason, the power plant has an additional gearbox. As the speed of the helicopter increases, the speed of the airflow over the main rotors also increases. Therefore, rotor blades provide more lifting power and pull the helicopter up. To avoid this problem, a special system is used that automatically activates when the SP-1 reaches a speed of above 148 km per hour and reduces the angle of attack of the rotor blades depending on the speed. Lowering the angle of attack is also lowering the lift. Thus, the Defiant gains more stable flight characteristics. The tips of the rotor blades have a special design that did not lose its efficiency at transonic speeds. The counter-rotating coaxial main rotors design makes the lift symmetrical and offers more stable flight characteristics. Also, compared to conventional helicopter design, it provides a more stable flight in a crosswind and has 50% better performance in high hot power performance. The rotor head used on the SP-1 has a special aerodynamic design that reduces drag. The rotor blades of the Defiant have a manual folding mechanism. Metal reinforced composite components are used for the SP-1's fuselage to reduce the weight. Even if one of the two engines would be lost, the helicopter can continue its flight at a speed of 288 km per hour. As we mentioned before, very little information has been published officially about the SP-1. The helicopter can carry 12 troops apart from the crew. The rotor diameter is estimated to be around 15 meters. Its empty weight is around 11,500 kilograms. The Defiant has already reached speeds of 380 km per hour. The target is to reach a cruising speed of 450 km per hour. It is known that with the existing turboshaft engines, the SP-1 cannot meet FLRIA criteria for the combat radius. Now, if we compare these two competitors, each has its own advantages and disadvantages. First of all, especially in high speeds, the tilt rotor design has the advantage of less vibrating compared to the coaxial rotor. This is an essential advantage in keeping the fatigue of troops and crew within a certain limit during long flights. The vibration has also negative effects on the life of mechanical parts, electronics and fuselage. Similarly, against the drag of high speed, the tilt rotor design is more advantageous in terms of the load on the mechanical parts compared to the coaxial rotor design. The SP-1 is a more compact helicopter than the V-280, so the Valor is an easier target against the ground fire. Besides, the Defiant has the advantage of being able to land and take off from narrower areas than its opponent. Smaller dimension is a factor that facilitates the deployment of the helicopter to a ship or a forward base. Despite using all turboshaft engines in the trials that are currently being conducted, the V-280 has achieved the FLRIA requirements. The SP-1, on the other hand, is waiting for the development of a new engine to meet these requirements. 
and the advanced tactical fighter program launched in the 1980s, the fact that the YF-22 had lines similar to the F-15 was instrumental in its victory over the YF-23. Of course, that wasn't the main reason. However, the generals, who are generally more conservative, could have a sense of confidence in the similar equipment they use. In this aspect, the V-280 has a fuselage resembling the UH-60 and the proven tilt rotor design with the V-22. It looks friendly. However, the US Armed Forces are not accustomed to the coaxial rotor compound helicopter design. This unfamiliar appearance may cause some anxiety. Bell has not won a major tender from the US Armed Forces for a while. But its rival in this program is a consortium consists of Skorsky Aircraft, a Lockheed Martin company, and Boeing. The lobbying power of these two defense giants, both in the armed forces and in the Congress, is extremely high. This power, no matter how successful it may be, can block off the V-280. Nevertheless, it is also possible for the US armed forces to choose different helicopters for different branches Due to the difficulties experienced in the F-35, which was developed as a single aircraft for all military services. Over the past 30 years, the USA has introduced many revolutionary projects. However, very few of them were able to see the finish line. Similarly, although it is viewed as a groundbreaking program, the FLRAA could be a victim of budget cuts. However, the V-280 and the SB-1 prove that the future helicopter designs will differ from the current conventional ones. It is not a rational approach to step back at this point. Even if this program could be terminated after maybe 10 years, a similar one will inevitably come up again after 20-30 years. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you like our video.